Hi guys, um, it's me again. So in this video, I'm going to look at changing the subject of the formula, right? Now, this is something that is extremely important to you guys. It's a fundamental topic that you need to be able to do, right? Changing the subject of the formula. Now, so before I begin, right, um, just remember to hit like and subscribe to my math channel, right? Um, I do give online maths, chemistry, physics, and soon add maths classes online. Um, so let's look at this question here. We want to change the subject of the formula. We want to make A the subject of the formula of this equation here, right? Now, what that means is that we are trying to get an equation that says A is equal to something. We don't know what this something is, right? So <clears throat> in this equation, we have A on the right-hand side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write this as u plus at is equal to v, right? Now, usually when I do this, students say, so why you didn't change the sign? Well, it's simple like this. If I have, um, let's say, 4 plus 2 equal to 6, right? That means my left-hand side is equal to my right-hand side. So therefore, I can say that 6 is equal to 4 plus 2. It's the same concept here right? The left-hand side of my equation is equal to the right-hand side. So therefore, the right-hand side must equal to the left-hand side. So if v is equal to u plus at, it also means that u plus at has to be equal to v. So we're trying to make a the subject of the formula. So we need to get rid of the u that's on the left-hand side. So at is equal to v minus u. So essentially, what I'm doing is subtracting u from both sides of the equation, right? Or you might think of it as the u is on the left side, and when I move it across to the right side, it becomes minus u. So therefore, we want to figure out what a is. So you need to get rid of the t. In order to do that, you need to divide both sides of the equation by t. When that happens, this is going to become a is equal to v minus u all over t. So that's my answer. a is equal to v minus u divided by t. Let's look at the next one here, right? Make a the subject of the formula. Again, you want to make a the subject of the formula. So I need my a to be on my left-hand side. So therefore, I'm going to write um, ut. One second, let me just give you something there. Right, so what I'm going to write is ut plus a half at squared, right, is equal to s, right? Now we're trying to make a the subject of the formula here. So we should get rid of the ut that is on the left-hand side. So a half a t squared is equal to s minus u t, right? So next thing now, on the left-hand side, we have a half a t squared. Now, the easiest way to get rid of the half is to multiply both sides of the equation by 2, right? Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to multiply by 2. If we multiply by 2, we're going to get a t squared is equal to 2 multiply by everything that is on the right hand side, which is s minus u t, right? Now, we're trying to make a the subject of the formula. So therefore, a, all we need to do is to divide by t squared. So this is going to be 2, open brackets, s minus u t all over t squared, right? So all I've done, I've rearranged the formula, and I have a is equal to 2, open brackets, s minus u t divided by t squared, right? Let's do another one. And this one here, we want to make u the subject of the formula, right? So again, you want u to be on the left side. So I'm going to write this as 1 over u plus 1 over v is equal to 1 over f, right? Now, I want to get 1 over u is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over v, right? That's how we get rid of the 1 over v on the left side. Now. This is where things get a little confusing for some students, right? Now, you have 1 over u equal to 1 over f minus 1 over v. What I should do on the right-hand side is to do that subtraction. That's a fraction. Those are fractions we're trying to subtract. So this is 1 over u, right? Now, if you want to subtract 1 over f minus 1 over v, right? What you're going to do, the LCM in this case here is going to be f v, right? And when I do my subtraction, like I typically would do, 
So let me do it on the side here so you see exactly what I'm doing. One over F minus one over V, right? Uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do like if we're adding, sorry, if we're subtracting fractions here. So my LCM is FV. So first step is to take FV and divide by this F here, right? This is gonna give me V. When I get that answer, I need to take that answer and multiply by one. So this becomes V here. Next thing, I'm gonna take my FV again and divide by V, right? And that's gonna give me F. Now, when I get that F, I'm gonna take that and I'm going to multiply by this one here. So this is minus F, right? So that's what I'm, what I'm gonna get when I do the subtraction. So it's gonna be V minus F, right? Now, you wanna make U the subject of the formula. Right now we have one over U is equal to V minus F over VF. So you have a fraction equal to another fraction. So what you should do is simply cross multiply, right? But remember, you wanna get U on the left hand side. Eh? So this is U open brackets V minus F is equal to FV. So U is gonna be equal to FV over U minus F, right? Now, most of, these, most of these equations are from physics, right? And CXC tends to bring those a lot. So let's look at another example here. Oh, well, this one here, right, is a popular equation in, um, in physics, right? So we wanna make L the subject of the formula. So when you have a square root sign, right, what you need to do is to get rid of the square root sign. And the only way you can do that is by squaring both sides of the equation. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write this as two pi square root of L over G is equal to T, right? That's the first thing I'm gonna do. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of the two pi. So I'm gonna have square root of L over G is equal to T divided by two pi, right? On the left-hand side, you're multiplying by two pi. So if you wanna get rid of the two pi, you're gonna to have to divide by two pi. Next step. To get rid of that square root sign, we must square both sides of our equation. So, when you square square root, the square root sign disappears. So on the left-hand side, you're gonna end up with L over G. And on the right-hand side, we're gonna square, we have to square all of this. T over two pi needs to be squared, right? So let's move across here now. So we're gonna have L over G is equal to, when I square T over two pi, it's gonna be t squared over four pi squared, right? That's a mistake that some students make. You're squaring everything inside of the brackets, right? Next step, we are trying to make L the subject of the formula. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna cross multiply. So four pi squared L is equal to G t squared. So therefore L is equal to G t squared divided by four pi squared. Right? So that's my answer there. I made L the subject of the formula, right? We have our next one here, right? Um, F is equal to M open brackets V minus U over T. And I wanna make V the subject of the formula. So first things first, um, I'm gonna write this as M open brackets V minus U over T is equal to F. Right now, what I will typically do here is I can write this F as F over one, right? And from here, I can simply cross multiply. So M open brackets V minus U is equal to F multiplied by T, which is equal to FT. Now you're trying to make V the subject of the formula. At this stage here, you can put V minus U is equal to FT divided by M and therefore V is equal to F T over M plus U, right? So I've just made V the subject of the formula here. Now in order for you guys to get this, you need to practice as much questions like as you can, right? Now in this one here, we wanna find, um, we wanna make R the subject of the formula, right? So what we have is four thirds, I'm just rearranging this four thirds pi R cube is equal to V. Now, on the left-hand side, some students have problems with the fractions. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write this 
in a different way, right? I'm gonna write this as four pi cube, four pi r cube over three is equal to V over one, right? Now, all I've done on the left-hand side is just write it in a slightly different way. It's the same thing, four thirds pi r cube is the same as four pi r cube over three. V can be written as V over one. At this stage, what I can do, I can cross multiply. So four pi r cube is equal to three V, right? So now we're getting somewhere. You wanna make R the subject of the formula. So you need to get rid of the four pi on the left-hand side. So R cube is equal to three V over four pi. And therefore, if you wanna get R, on the left-hand side, you have R cube. So in order to get rid of that, we're gonna find the cube root of all of these, all of these things on the right-hand side. So this is three V over four pi, and this is cube root, right? So we made R the subject of the formula. Let's see what else I have here. Oh, this is the same one. Um, right, so in this one here, we wanna make K the subject of the formula, right? So again, I'm gonna write this over as pi open brackets L minus K over G is equal to P, right? Next step, I need to get rid of that pi on the left-hand side. So this is um, the square root of L minus K over G is equal to P divided by pi. Now, like I said, when you have square root signs, in order to get rid of them, you need to square both sides of the equation. So when I square the left-hand side, the square root sign disappears. So this is gonna become L minus K, right, is over G is equal to P over pi squared, right? So L minus K over G is gonna be equal to P squared over pi squared, right? Now. Easiest thing for us to do here is to just cross multiply, right? And when you cross multiply, pay attention to what you're trying to find. You're trying to find or make K the subject of the formula. So since I have a minus K, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna write this as G P squared is equal to pi squared multiplied by L minus K, right? So G P squared is equal to you're gonna remove the brackets here. So it's gonna be pi squared multiplied by L. So this is gonna be pi squared L. And then I'm gonna take pi squared and multiply by key. So this is gonna be minus pi squared key, right? Um, so let's see, where am I, where am I? So remember we're trying to make key the subject of the formula. So I'm gonna put the pi squared key on the left side. It's gonna become positive pi squared key. And on the right hand side, you're gonna end up with pi squared L minus G P squared. And now to find K, K is simply pi squared L minus G P squared over pi squared, right? So this is my answer here, right? Um, so this is just a quick video on changing the subject of the formula. And like I said, you guys need to practice this in order to be able to do this and you need to be comfortable with it, all right? So take care guys.